Megan, I like many people, are interested whether God exists, what God's properties are, and uh, people give me lots of advice on how to discern all of that. Uh, because of my scientific training and philosophy, I look to metaphysics, and many people say that that's absolutely the wrong way to know God. You'll never figure that out. You are a metaphysician, you believe in God. Yeah. Uh, how does metaphysics and, and, and that way of thinking help us to discern either whether there is a God or if there is a God, w what that God might be like? First, I'll just note something that's puzzling about doing metaphysics of God, especially if you're a theist, is like Christians, Catholics like me, think of God as a person. It's weird to ask metaphysical questions about a person, at least a person that you think you're in yeah. some kind of relationship with. So like, it would really disturb my mother if I called her one day and told her like, I've been thinking about whether you have a body or whether you're just a soul or how long you've existed. She would think like, that's not the appropriate way to interact with me. And I think some people's reservations about doing metaphysics about God is they think like, you know, if you already believe in God, you should just be in this personal relationship with him. And it's weird to bring up those questions if you feel like you're already in this personal relationship. And I get that. When you're like praying in church, you shouldn't be thinking about four-dimensionalism. <laughs> but God, unlike my mother, is a pretty difficult to understand individual. <laughs> He's much more elusive than my mother is. Um, and I think that's some evidence that one of the ways he wants us to know him is in this kind of really intellectual way. And that's one way you start to respond to the problem of hiddenness, is God wants us to think about him and he wants to theorize mm -hmm. about him and work with each other to try mm -hmm. to understand him. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's part of what it is to love him. And I think mm. whenever people give me this, like, you know, I, you know, theists will give me this line about, like, I don't do metaphysics because I just, like, love God so much. I don't need to, like, ask these questions about whether God is three substances or one substance uh -huh. or three persons or one person. Or, you know, the usual metaphysical questions. What are his properties really uh -huh. like? I say, well, you know, if you, if you love someone... You really want to understand every aspect of that person. When you're in the early stages of a relationship with somebody, you're always trying to learn more yeah. about their history and what they're like and what their attitudes are towards certain things. You're trying to build a model in your head of who they are so that you can carry that with you when they're not in your presence. And I think for theists, metaphysics helps us do that. I mean, sometimes we get things radically wrong, and there are questions about God that we're never going to know, presumably, because they're just like interior Well, sometimes to just God. ask the questions is, 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 yeah. is to luxuriate in trying to understand this being. Absolutely. And I mean, sometimes metaphysics can help us clarify our theology, too, as we've learned from, you know, the tradition. So Aquinas learns a bunch of metaphysics from Plato and from Plato's successors, and then uses that to help explain a lot of things that are otherwise extremely confusing yeah. about what, the religious what, what, tradition. What are some examples of where metaphysics can actually make progress in understanding God? Because people claim that you can... The same arguments are today that, that were in the Middle Ages that were at, at, with Plato. But, but where, where can you show that pro you can make progress in understanding something about God through metaphysics? So I think it's a subset of just the general puzzle of how do philosophers make progress. So some people say, we never solve any of these disputes. We never figured out if Plato was right about the realm of the forms. Yeah. Fair enough. One thing philosophers do make progress on is helping us to make the right kinds of distinctions, to ask better questions. And I think when it comes to thinking about someone like God, um, one of the things we've gotten a great deal of help from Augustine and Aquinas and from contemporary philosophers of religion is just learning like new ways to ask questions. You might, you might have the like question like, is God in time or outside of time? You bring a philosopher on the scene, they're going to point out like 25 different ways you could formulate that question where evidence could come to bear on it. And even if at the end of the day, because these problems are so hard, you know, they're trying to understand really difficult problems where the evidence is really light on the ground, just even knowing which question we want to ask is something that we learn about ourselves and the world that puts us in a better situation. So I love Augustine, and I think Augustine's one of these great philosophers of the past that taught us how to ask more interesting questions. So one question you might have is, God is so hard to know about. How could we possibly try to teach other people about God? How could we grow this religion? And Augustine thinks quite a bit about this. You know, he's a good bishop and a good mm -hmm. philosopher. And he says, look, we have to be able to talk about God and to, to think of Scripture as like a canon of information about God. And that requires being able to read these texts in a really serious, rigorous way and not just thinking like we can give anybody the Bible and that they're going to understand it. And then you have like some theoretical questions. How does the Bible, why is the Bible so weirdly written? 
uh, which is a really obvious. It's not a systematic and, theology. Yeah, and if it? God really wants us to know about Him through the Bible, then why didn't He make like the truths more obvious? Why do we have to have these really mm. complicated fights about what it, what it actually means? And Augustine, I think, has a really interesting suggestion on this front. He says, "Well, think about this indirectly. We're giving an explanation for why God would do something like write a complicated Bible." One of the indirect effects of making this document very difficult to interpret and the kind of thing that, that rewards repeated deep scholarship is that it requires you guys to come together and to like work together and to care about each other and to form scholarly communities and to form a church of sorts. Uh, maybe that's something God really wanted. I think about this as a college professor. Like Sometimes you give your students group projects and you know the answer, but you hold back from them because you want them to work together to figure it out. And There's something good about figuring it out together. Augustine develops this theory and, in the process, you know, gets us to ask these really interesting questions. What are we getting out of reading this text? What could possibly be good about hiddenness? Uh, those are questions philosophers come up with, seeing the opposite side, anticipating the objections, yeah. that I think definitely help us make progress in, a, in, this, in this difficult project of trying to build a model of God or an understanding of why God would do what he would do. Another area is uh, the different traits of God and how they articulate together, the yeah. so-called coherence of, 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 of theistic uh, um, uh, assumptions and the characteristics that God would have. That, you know, if you're all-knowing and, and all-good and, all, and whether it's a problem of evil or, or how you can know everything, God knows everything. What yeah, does that mean? Does God absolutely. know everything? Does God know every piece of bad art that could be ever created? I mean, what, what does yeah. it mean for... So, so in the process of, of, of really analyzing all those things, you, you get a deeper understanding of what God is. You may not all agree on it, but you get this deeper understanding. Definitely. And if you're going to worship this being, you should, you should know something about something that you're worshiping. That's part of just being a morally respectable mm -hmm. agent is, mm -hmm. is like having enough curiosity to know the object of your worship. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, God is so transcendent and because of the problem of divine hiddenness, one of the only means available we have to really start to understand God is through philosophical and theological speculation, and part of that is metaphysics. And just uh, speaking personally, because you are a believer and you're here at Notre Dame, you're a Catholic and, 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 uh, and a philosopher, a metaphysician, and very well respected, when you do metaphysics, you're obviously doing it intellectually and putting your life into it, but do you ever feel a, a spiritual um, a kind of a sense about the work that you do when you're dealing with metaphysics of God? Absolutely. So I, a couple times a year, will go on retreat by myself, and I just finished one two weeks ago out in Utah, and just go away for a couple days. I usually have a couple philosophical problems I want to knock around. These, these ones all had to do with time. Mm -hmm. Before I go on retreat, you know, I pray, and I, I ask God, like, where, where should I be looking? Mm -hmm. And I want to get at the truth. Part of being a good philosopher is, like, I just want to know the truth. I don't necessarily want to just get this paper done, mm -hmm. but I want to, like, see things more clearly. And, you know, all of us in the day-to-day -day busyness of our job kind of lose sight of these big goals. But for me, especially when I take time and I'm doing philosophy in this really intentional way, I absolutely feel like God is part of it. And sometimes I'm not getting the really creative breakthrough I want. But, you know, you feel like you know, the kind of enjoyment that you get from thinking about the truth, that's something that he's definitely part of. And something that, you know, builds gratitude in you as a philosopher. I think it's really wonderful to think, like, I'm so grateful that, like, the truth is out there mm -hmm. to be accessed and, and is like personal in this way.